Hope you're doing good. Micah back with another video. Back with a new Samsung device. Something I didn't know whether or not I was going to end up obtaining. And sure enough, I couldn't help myself but do so with the Galaxy S24+. Plus. Samsung is doing something pretty big here when it comes to Galaxy AI, as they call it. Generative AI in their phone products. And right here, upon releasing the phone freedom we have the galaxy s24 plus right here in that cobalt purple so without further ado let's cue the unboxing silence Samsung has a beautiful device, but has terrible packaging now because it's not even an unboxing experience anymore. Like, what are we doing, Samsung? We got to get it together. Okay. Like even Apple has not sacrificed that much with their unboxing experience. We need that experience to come back. But I will say this Thanos cobalt purple is phenomenal in person. It looks astoundingly beautiful and just to get a good look at everything real quick comparing it against my iphone 15 pro here of course sizing is a little different this year for the set uh, for the samsung galaxy s24 plus it's a tad bit bigger going from 6.6 .6 to 6.7 inches in height and if you guys can see it looks very very similar to an iphone now I don't think too, pe too many people are going to be mad at that because iPhone has more or less set the standard when it comes to phone hardware aesthetic. And for Samsung to follow through that, it is pretty interesting. What's also interesting is that this phone being 6.7 inches is lighter than my 6.1 inch iPhone 15 Pro. And it has three cameras just like the iPhone. So it's actually pretty interesting that this phone is really that light. Something that I was starting to get used to is having the volume rockers on the opposite side of the phone. Since it's been about, what, seven months since I've had a Samsung device, being the S23 Ultra was my last device. So rocking this S24 Plus is going to be interesting. So let's go ahead and power it on while we're talking. There's several new little things about the... Is it dead? <laughs> Several new things with the Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus. As mentioned, 6.7 inches in size. Now it has Quad HD in terms of the display with 120 hertz adapt refresh rate. 2600 nit peak brightness for this phone. That is phenomenally bright. And since this is the first phone to really kick off the year, it's going to be interesting to see what Apple does in comparison to that nit peak brightness. What else? 4,900 milliamp battery in this. Should get even better battery life than last year because of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chip that we have going on in the phone. And, of course, with software getting more and more optimized and improved year over year, that should also make a difference when it comes to battery life. You get 25 watt and 45 watt fast charging, which is going to be interesting with this as well. Very, 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 very good to see a high battery in this big size phone here. What else can we also say? Well, let me go ahead and agree to all of this because I usually don't mind sending my stuff like that. We also have 12 gigabytes of RAM, 
as the standard for the S24 Plus, you get two storage options. You get 256 gigs and 512. Since I pre-ordered this, Samsung usually has pretty good pre-ordering deals, and I got a free upgrade to 512 gigabytes for $1,000 because that is the starting price for the S24 Plus, which means that if you opted for the 512 outside the pre-order, you're most likely going to probably spend somewhere around $1,100. But nonetheless, very, very solid from that perspective. A $1,000 price point for this, I don't think is necessarily bad either because of the improvements that they've added with AI, the Quad HD display panel, the high battery, then the, I think those things are good enough where $1,000 is, you know, a good middle point for the Galaxy S24 series. Now, as it connects to T-Mobile, so that way it can insert or uh, uh, activate my eSIM because that's what we're going with now is eSIM, right? Uh, thanks to Apple really starting that trend. Samsung is following suit. The three cameras, we get a 50 megapixel. We get a... 12 megapixel ultra wide and we get a 10 megapixel three times zoom and on the front we get a 12 megapixel so looks like i need to go ahead and start restart my phone let's see yep go ahead and okay well is it going to do that i was going to restart it yeah let's go ahead and restart so again as i said this is going to be a pretty pretty interesting year for samsung because it's also going to be interesting to see what they do with their foldables later on in the year but just a few features to mention the main thing when it comes to galaxy ai is the ai capabilities you get when it comes to photo editing as well as google's circle to search which means since i'm using gestures you probably have to swipe up from the corner and hold wait for the screen to light up or flash and then you can circle whatever you want to then google search right there on the spot you don't have to go in okay you don't have to go anywhere else you can do it right there on the same page that you're looking at without having to open up additional windows which is nice and then you also have live translate while you are talking on the phone Let's see here. Easy setup with another device. I'm going to have to do that off camera real quick. Well, let me just go ahead and finish some of the things I'm saying. As I said with Live Translate, with phone calls, it can translate the phone call if you're talking with somebody in another language, as well as text messaging. You can It will be able to also translate text messages in a different language, which is pretty unique, I will say. Other apps that benefit is like the Notes app. You got voice memos that uh, also benefit from this, as well as the language packs that you'll have to download to take advantage of those translation features. So keep that in mind when looking at using these translation AI features. But I will definitely say it's gonna be interesting to see how often these new AI features are really used because how often are we really talking to people in a different language? So that's, that's the interesting aspect of it. But if you could translate in real time while talking to somebody let's say if you go on a vacation and you're talking to somebody a different language and you could communicate with them in that way i think that would be super amazing so let me go ahead and start this trans this transfer process so one of the options that i'm going to use to actually copy my data over from my iphone is using the usb-c cable i think that's a good recommendation because of the transfer speed you can get especially with the newer iphones right the newer iphone 15 series has usb-c so being able to use this to also then transfer should almost guarantee fast lightning transfer speeds for your data there's not a lot that i should have to copy over from my iphone to the galaxy s24 plus but nonetheless it should not take long to be able to do this let me go ahead and continue to finish this here so here are some of the features we get with the advanced intelligence instead of artificial intelligence they're calling it advanced intelligence but as you see the phone app samsung's keyboard it can also retranslate how you text to fit specific you know ways of texting so it could be professional it could be casual it could be slang heavy you know it could be you know very loose so it has those AI capabilities when it comes to the Samsung keyboard. You got the interpreter, as I said, with the live translate feature. Samsung Notes can automatically organize your notes for you or a note that you've taken to make it look better. It can summarize what you've essentially put together in a note and make it even more understandable to yourself if you needed that kind of help. The voice recorder can do the same thing, summarizing your 
interviews or conversations you may have had with other people. Maybe you're recording a lecture. It can organize the notes for you. Samsung Internet also benefits from it. And, of course, the photo editor is one of the biggest features they touted because you will get the AI feature at the bottom corner of the picture to let people know that it was edited with AI. So, again... We're going to see how this works out. I like Samsung Wallet. I find it to be just as good as Apple Wallet. I, I believe Samsung Wallet has now also offered digital license, I believe, much like the Apple Wallet and Google Wallet. So we'll see if I'll be able to actually add it to the Samsung Wallet as well. So it's going to be interesting to see from that perspective. As you see, I have it plugged into my iPhone in the back that you see on the table as it tries to start transferring data. It did say something about charging the device. So to 80%, which is kind of wild, because that's 60% right now. It should be more than enough to transfer data. But we will see how this process goes. I like to also point out as I've been setting up the phone, you get the option to choose what display mode you start in. It would have been nice if there was an option in here already to go between light mode and dark mode. I think I'm gonna go light mode for now because I would like it to automatically switch between the two, but it's interesting. And with the dark mode, okay, dark mode does look like it is completely black, inky black, since we got that beautiful dynamic AMOLED display. I believe it is inky black, but I've I've heard that there's moments where it's not. It's more of a dark gray as opposed to an inky black, but we're going to find out. All right, so as I waited and waited, I decided I think I'm just going to go fresh and from scratch on this phone so that way I could really kind of, you know, what's the great, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, retune myself, resync myself with Samsung software. And so I think I'm going to do that by means of just starting from scratch, downloading every app that I can think of that I need from scratch on this phone. Because I could use the, Sam the Samsung's cloud and I can't actually restore. I think it's still up there. If not, all I got to do is go into the... Um Go into Samsung, uh, it's, oh my goodness, go into the settings and go to Samsung's cloud and actually restore my data from my Galaxy S23 Ultra. So I can't say that finag I won't say finagling, but once it once you make it into the phone, you can still restore this, uh, after the setup process. So I did want to bring that to you guys, but this is the Galaxy S24 Plus. One of the things I usually like to do, so let me swipe down here, I like to go into settings and then right away i like to come in here to display and then in display if my focus stops tripping here i like to come in here uh we're on full hd let's push that to quad that's right here boom boom there we go it's on quad and then what i also like to do i change this to five minutes All right and then keep screen while viewing. I also, I also like that. Let me press back. I'm, I'm used to the iPhone, so I'm trying to swipe across the screen. And then navigation bar. So instead of buttons, I like swipe gestures, just like that. And then you have the assistant app and circle to search, which is still available. So see how I can pull from that side now. That's what I wish would come to Apple. Maybe with iOS 18, we'll see. But one of the things I like to do is that. And then I think if I swipe from the bottom, that's for Google. All right. Now, what if I do that? No, no. Uh -uh. Okay. So, yes, you do have to press and hold on the actual navigation home uh, button down at the bottom to do this. So, as you see, it's there. If I want to circle something, I'm going to circle this. Oh, okay. And then right then and there, it brings up how to change digital assistant on swipe gesture. That's funny. That's not what I was looking for. But as you see, I'm still in the page that I wanted to be in. But all you got to do is press and hold on this and boom. So you don't have to actually use the buttons for this to work. I actually like the fact that I can use the gestures because that's what I wanted to do. So I have it from the corner, actually activates Google Assistant. And that's all I really needed. So if I swipe back, I'm, oh, I am missed that swipe back feature. Woo. All right, guys. So I, I thought I'd give you a little preview of some things. I'm going to end up changing. Oh, I didn't have to change that. It's still here. So swiping down from anywhere by default is on to access notification panel and then of course pull it down look at one ui 6.1's aesthetic i think this came with one ui 6 but we will have a feature breakdown video on this as well so don't you guys worry about it i'm gonna have y'all covered all right so i'm well i'm getting a little excited i miss him so i'm gonna hand i miss hammy hammy all right so if you guys are excited and can't wait to look forward to that 
If you guys haven't already, make sure you guys hit that like button. It's free. Subscribe to the channel. It's free. Hit the notification bell. It's also free. So that way you know my videos. So that way you and I can sit back. So that's it was cracking with your man Micah. Sign on until the next video. This beautiful Thanos, boy. Ooh-wee. Wait for it.